when does it stop? How long should we be silent? Should we continue to be oppressed? Should we continue to not have a voice? Should we continue to be docile? Should we continue to allow knees on our neck? Should we continue to not have a voice? When is enough enough? will be discussing something that that really made me feel bad i also want to give a public apology to my friend for for encouraging her and i want to apologize again i know you said i didn't have to but i want to apologize again so long story short someone posted something on my friend's facebook and i will post it right here Seven funerals, a golden casket, and broadcast on every major network for a man who was a violent felon and career criminal. Soldiers die and the family gets a flag. So with that said, it infuriated my friend. My friend is white. It infuriated her because I think the post is insensitive. I think it's racially motivated. I think um, I think it's wrong because I don't think. And of course, she was referring to George Floyd, who was murdered by uh, the police officer who had his knee in his neck. So all of you may, some of you might agree with what this um, other person put, the seven funerals, a golden casket, and a broadcast on every major network. Some of you may agree with that, but many of us don't. For this reason, so my friend is what I told her. I said, and both parties are white, and I said, if you don't say anything to this lady, you then become part of the problem. I said, it is your responsibility to be part of the solution. You need to say something to your friend. You need to check her because it's wrong. It's insensitive. It perpetuates that privilege that this group of people deserve certain expectation, but this group doesn't. So it's up to you to say something to that teacher because we don't want to continue to perpetuate the stereotype um, that black lives don't matter. That's not, so it's up to you. She'll probably respect it more coming from and listen to you because it's coming from another white person. So it won't hold any weight because I'm going to be looked at as the angry black woman, the angry black person who, you know, just voicing her opinion. She's just mad and blah, blah, blah. No. So it has to come from you. That's how you become part of the problem. And I was like, if you don't say nothing, mm -mm, you just as bad as she is. Okay. And this is how things, how it has to go in order to start that movement for change. Somebody has to say something because if you don't say anything, maybe she's unaware of what she's saying. Maybe she doesn't realize she's being insensitive. Okay. Maybe she, she just doesn't know. So this is her response. This is how she responded. Follow me on this. Okay. I need you to follow me very carefully. So she then said to her, um, and it's a little long, so just follow me on this. She says, and this is another educator, a flag is a symbol of the honor earned and a sacrifice made in battle while serving America. Soldiers sign up to sacrifice themselves for our country, just like police officers are in a line of duty to protect and serve. So I ask you, what were they protecting and serving? 
While you believe that seven funerals seem a bit much for a man with a criminal past, it is a symbol of 400 years of oppression at the hands of white people in charge. Black America and people around the world are sick and tired of being sick and tired. Reverend Al Sharpton said it best, quote unquote. George Floyd's story is the story of black folks. You kept your knee in our neck. We had creative skills, but you wouldn't get your knee off our neck. It's time for us in George's name to stand up and say, get your knee off our necks. I would like to say, I read it. I thought her response was great. There's a difference between a subjective opinion and an objective opinion. This opinion or this point of view that she gave her friend was not emotionally charged. She gave the lady facts. She gave the lady, she educated the lady. I want to tell you what happened. Let me tell you what happened. She educated the lady. She didn't say, you don't have a right. You this, you that. She didn't do that. She didn't do any name calling. She didn't use any profanity. She used a quote to back up her point of view. She used historical facts. 400 years of oppressions. She used that blacks are tired of being tired. She used facts in the whole thing. I thought it was a great educational moment. And sometimes as an educator, we can take a lesson and turn it into a learning, an organic learning opportunity. That's, that's, what, we, that's what we're trying to do. Less than 10 minutes after she posted that, as a reply, she didn't even post it as a post on her page, which I told her to do. Because I was like, that's great. Now you should post it. For all your, 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 your privileged friends, okay? And colleagues, okay? So I was like, you should post that. You know who? Ring, ring, ring. Hello? Yes. Oh. Is this about the post or the reply that I sent to such and such? Oh, that's what this call is about? Baby, she got a call less than 10, maybe 15 minutes after she replied. After she replied, she got a call from her principal. The principal reprimanded her. It was a reply. It wasn't even a post she posted on her page. She just replied under the lady's post. Well, you know, maybe black people feel this way because they're tired. After 400 years of oppression, and let me give you a quote. According to Al Sharpton, when we teach our kids to write something, we teach them, we also teach them to back up whatever you're saying with evidence. That's what she did. So... This is what her principal said in a nutshell, in a nutshell. And I did get permission to talk about these things, but I'm not going to uh, give any names. She said, um, uh, miss, uh, such and such, you need to remain neutral during these politically and racially charged times. She also told me to be careful because I am friends on Facebook with her former former parents so what you're telling her miss principal is that she should not have a voice is that she should not have a, an opinion although she said these things she's not on the clock she didn't use uh the school's email she didn't use the school's school she wasn't at school she said this on her own time and was even more flabbergasting is that she just gave the lady facts. It wasn't even uh, like a, uh, you know how you could get into somebody but like you such and such and such, you this. It wasn't even none of that. It was just educating this woman about why black people feel a certain way and why George had the seven funerals. 
and why he got all his media coverage. She gave the lady facts. So what this principal is saying that you need to be quiet. You do not need to um, voice your opinion. But that's what we're taught as educators. We're trained to teach our students to have a rich vocabulary, to think critically and deeper, to form their own opinions, to voice how they feel about a subject. We teach them how to debate. We teach them how to evaluate and analyze the pros and cons of a situation. We teach them to stand up for themselves. We teach them to be strong and powerful people. But on the other side, you're telling your teacher to be quiet. Why, Miss Principal? Because you're also part of the problem and when someone is trying to ask did you even take the time to read her response because it was her objective point of view she served them with facts not much of her opinion by the way she served she gave the lady education so our job is only to educate the ones in the classroom but not outside the classroom we're supposed to be quiet we're supposed to not voice our opinions and i can i can say sometimes that you could be extreme and then you're concerned it will that bleed over into the classroom but we are educators that's what she did she educated she gave her objective opinion without the rage without the anger she just gave her fat she educated her why is she being told to be quiet because she's still being a teacher i say shame on you miss principal shame on you and this is how things won't change because we have people like her telling her to be quiet don't say anything let the white privilege continue to say what they want but you be quiet don't say nothing because she has that right to say something i don't want to get into the black and white debate i really don't but i'm curious would that principal have said something if that teacher responded the same exact way if she was black I'm just curious. Shame on you, Miss Principal. I can see if she was like, oh, I, I hate white people. I hate black people. I can see that. You, you probably want to address that. that that's, that's a bit extreme. I, I, I would agree with that. I also agree that if you feel strongly about blacks, you feel strongly about whites, but as an educator, can you be unbiased when you get in the classroom? Can you give that same education or the same lesson to that white person as you do the black person? Do you treat that white person the same as a black person and vice versa? You're unbiased. You can treat everybody the same in the classroom, meaning there's no privilege, meaning you're not going to think less of the black person, you're not going to think less. If it's a black teacher, you're not going to think less of the white, the white student, whatever, you know, vice versa. You can feel what you feel. You can be, you can believe whatever you want to believe. But I feel as though when you're in a classroom, you got to draw that dividing line. You have to be unbiased. You can't treat one student better than you treat the other because you have a uh, certain feelings about the other race, whether you're black, you're white. Do not take it out on those babies. That's how I feel. And if you cannot control how you feel about black and white, you should not be an educator. Because most schools, you know, they kind of mixed here going on. You should be able to treat all races, all cultures, every religion the same. You know, your lesson may be differentiated, of course. But we're talking about, you know, race here. That's that's what that was what we talked about. So once again, I hope this wasn't too long. I want to say I want to apologize for my friend because I was like, no, you gotta say something to the teacher. And here she goes. She gets reprimanded for educating 
ignorance. You may not agree with everything I said in this video, and that's okay. Sometimes we have to agree to disagree, but we do not have to be disrespectful. My friend was not disrespectful. She just gave the lady the facts, gave her the information, and that's how she was treated by administration. Who knows, maybe administration will say something about me. <laughs> I think that it's sad. This is why we have the problem because people are allowed to say what they want to say that's racially motivated, but no one checks them. It's okay. That privilege is like, oh no, she can say that because there's that white privilege. We're not gonna check her, but as soon as this person says so, we're gonna check them on that. So what, the, what happened, the lady ran and told her principal, they're not even at the same school. They don't even work together anymore. So she ran, oh, this is what she said. She, I said, look, I said this, that I can't believe that this person is a criminal and he had all these things. What a shame. Which is racially motivated and geared, okay? And then my friend is like, uh, but excuse me, tap, tap. Excuse me, poke, poke. Do you know that these black people feel this way because of history, because of this, because of oppression? They're tired of the knees and back. And let me quote, you know, Al Sharpton. I'm giving you a quote. Nowhere did she give her real personal opinion. She gave her objective point of view. Objective. So I, I, I don't understand why she got in trouble, why she's told to be silent. Right, right. What is your point of view? What do you think about that? Should we all just not say anything? Should we all just be silent? Should we never check somebody and try to educate them? I just looked at a um a video. It was with Dave uh Dave Chappelle. And he was on stage saying X, Y, and Z, and then there was a white lady who a white heckler uh who was saying stuff. And he was like, but it was racially motivated. I don't I, I wasn't at the show, but you know, he gave a recap. And Dave Chappelle is brilliant. He never cursed at her, never insulted her. He educated this woman on the black experience and why people feel this way. And then he started throwing names, names, name after name, name after name of people who had died and people who were killed. But here's the kicker, right? So after the show, the white lady wanted to talk to Dave Chappelle, but his manager was like, no, mm -mm. And Dave Chappelle was like, no, 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 let it in, let it in, let it in. And the lady was like, you know, I didn't know these things and she's upset and she's crying. She said, I'm really sorry, I wanna apologize. And he said, it's okay, it's okay, you got the lesson. Now you have the lesson. Now it's your responsibility to now check other white people or other or other people in general who are saying things because they'd rather hear from you than rather hearing it from me. But you know what's ironic? This happened four years ago. Four years ago. And we're still saying the same thing. It's their responsibility to check other people. You're in the break room, you're in the teacher's lounge, you hear something that's just racially mo motivated, you hear something in the classroom, a, a, a teacher not treating another student right because you think it's like kind of racially charged, whether it's black or white. A black teacher to a white student or of another race, you gotta check them. On both sides, they need to be checked. Because it's not right. Because it's my responsibility, I'm sorry, to protect my students when I'm in a classroom. I protect all my students, black, white, purple, green, yellow. It doesn't matter. I love them all the same. And if there's another teacher that's mistreating one of my students or I see another student, I'm going to say something. It's just like a bully. 
So the bully is allowed to continue to bully and do whatever they want to do and they never be checked? Come on now. Mm -mm. So it doesn't matter what color you are. Black, white, purple, Hispanic, Chinese, Indian, doesn't matter. If I feel as though you're, you're being un unfair, I'm gonna say something to you, especially to one of my students. And so, this teacher checked this lady, and the lady went and told. Did my friend run and say, well, this is what, this is what your teacher has said. Look, look, look at what she said, or, or whatever the lady is. Look at what she's putting on Facebook. What are you in second grade? But I think what's more egregious than that, in my opinion, I'm giving my opinion. Um, I think the principal, shame on you. Shame on you. Because my friend's response was actually very good. It was very neutral and it was and it came from an educational standpoint. I know I'm repeating myself, I'm just upset. And it came from an educational standpoint. I'm very upset and I apologize. Once again, I apologize. Um, I'm, j I'm just saddened how, how it was handled by the administration. Did the administration even read what you wrote? Or she said, oh, someone, uh, who runs to the principal and tells something like that? You know what, I ain't even gonna get into that because I've experienced that myself. I experienced, it. who knows, I might get in trouble for that. Go ahead. <laughs> But go ahead, put me on the naughty list. <laughs> but man, I'm just so sorry. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Um, what are your thoughts? Y'all may not agree. Some of you may not agree. The trolls come on out. Come on. <laughs> I've survived worse. <laughs> and I'll continue to survive. I mean, it is what it is. So leave your opinion on this issue in the comment section below. But Overall, if you don't realize that you have said something, sometimes people don't realize what they're saying is it insensitive. And if you don't realize it and no one ever says anything to you, how are you going to fix it? If I continue doing something wrong or teaching a lesson incorrectly or giving incorrect information to my students and no one says, pulls me to the side, hey Joy, you know, this is not how that works. You gotta do X, Y, and Z before you do a, B, and C. I was like, oh, I didn't know I was doing that. I'm sorry. Okay, so what do I do again? Oh, thank you for educating me on that. Thank you. Because if you don't know, how are you going to fix it? If no one ever says anything, how are you going to fix it? If no one ever educates these people, how is it going to be fixed? No, then the stereotypes continue to go on and on. It's perpetuating. 